I want to thank Rick for preaching the word for me last week. I haven't watched it yet. I plan to do that, but I heard it was pretty good, so I want to watch it even more. You know, if we don't find the preacher by September 30th, then what we may do is just set up all the retired preachers on the schedule and just... <laughs> I'll do the funeral, but somebody else can do the wedding. 1 <laughs> Peter 2, verses 4 through 8. We're going to talk today about precious stones. Precious stones. First Peter 2, verses 4 through 8. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. There's a story about a baby rabbit who was orphaned, and he was uh, adopted by a family of squirrels. The adoption led to some peculiar behaviors on the part of the rabbit. Because instead of jumping around like rabbits do, he scurried around like squirrels do. When the rabbit grew up, he went through an identity crisis. So the squirrel decided to go to his step parents, the mother and father squirrel, or yes, yeah, mother and father squirrel. And the rabbit confessed that he felt different than his stepbrothers and sisters. He didn't know he was a squirrel or a rabbit. So, he was confused. His stepparents' response to that was, Don't scurry, be hopping. <laughs> now, as Christians, sometimes we have identity crisis too. Like the little rabbit. Yeah. Peter's telling us that we need to be ship off the old block. Now, in order for that to make sense, you've got to know who the old block is. The old block is God. He's been around for a long time, so I guess you could say he's old. And our scripture today talks about him being a precious stone. So if we're going to follow the admonition of the scripture, we need to become chips off the old block. We need to become like God. We need to become living precious stones too. So let's look at how Peter describes Jesus. And that will help us know how we're supposed to be like Jesus too. We know from our text that Jesus is a living stone. Verse 3, Peter's talking about our precious Lord. Jesus, in fact, said he was going to build his church upon the rock. The good faith confession that Peter made in, Mark, in Matthew 16, 16. You are the Christ, Son of the living God. In verse 4, our text says, Jesus is a living stone. In fact, he's called the choice and precious stone. This precious and choice living stone was the stone that the Jews rejected. They didn't accept Jesus as the foundation stone upon which to build faith. We do. We accept Jesus as that foundation stone on which we build our faith. Men and women today, however, 
They still reject Jesus. They do not believe He is the Son of God. But he is God's chosen one, is God's favorite one, God's first fruits. This stone, which the builders rejected, verse 7 says, became the chief cornerstone. That's important because the cornerstone is the perfect stone that's perfectly square and the whole rest of the building is designed upon that stone. If the cornerstone is not perfect, then your building is going to be out of line. Your walls won't be straight. And you can go to houses today that builders have built and see that they didn't do a very good job of starting with a good foundation. In this passage, the scripture that we read today, I want you to notice something. Notice what Jesus is called here. Peter is identifying who Jesus is for us. In verse 4, he's called the living stone. And these are the blanks that are in your, in your bulletin if you want to fill them out, fill them in. In verse 4, he's called a choice stone. A, also in verse 4, a precious stone. Verse 6, a cornerstone. In verse 7, a rejected stone. Verse 8, a stumbling stone. And also in verse 8, a stone of offense. You think Peter was wanting us to see Jesus as a rock? Jesus is the stone. He's the living stone. He was giving us all that because he was going to say next, you and me, we're supposed to be living stones too. God is, a, is building a spiritual house. Sometimes it's called the household of God or the dwelling of God, dwelling place. All of us who are believers, all of us who are building upon the rock, we are the building blocks for what God is building. How many, how many building blocks do you think God's built, putting in His spiritual house? Well, I don't really know the answer to that. Maybe one day in heaven we, we'll find out, but these building blocks, you and me, every believer is a, is a building block, a living stone. We're the spiritual house God is building, the church. You know, we can't go to church because we are the church. We can go to the building and we can call ourselves the church because we're all here. But when we're not here, this is not really the church. It's just the building. God's building a spiritual house made up of you and me. And it's a living church because we are living stones. In a sense, what Peter was saying was, a living stone is a priest. Okay? Living stone is a priest. In other words, we pray to God. That's the job of a priest. We offer sacrifices to God through our, our giving, through our working, through the job that we perform, through the fact that we, we are an example of Christ to other people. That's a job of a priest. We're to do all these priestly things as living stones because we are priests. Maybe you've heard of the priesthood of all believers. That's, that's us. That's the people who make up the church. That's these living stones. We offer spiritual sacrifices of our obedience. Romans 12, 1 and 2. We give sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. Hebrews 13, 15. We please God when we offer sacrifices of, of doing good things to meet other people's needs. Hebrews 13, 16. That's what living stones are supposed to do. 
In Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 19, it says that we're no longer strangers and aliens. We are part of God's own household. We are these living stones. And it, says, it goes on to say we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and of the prophets. And it doesn't say this, but I think we could also include that great cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us. Hebrews 11 talks about. And Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of that spiritual building. <coughs> household that we're a part of. And Ephesians also says, I think it's in verse 22, upon him, meaning Jesus, that cornerstone, the whole building is being fit together as a dwelling place for God. A dwelling place for God. In other words, God is living in this spiritual house. God's living in these living stones, that's you and me, that's, that's amazing. Isn't it? <laughs> Think that God is living in us, these living stones. We're to be living stones just like Jesus is a living stone. There's a decision we have to make. Will we accept this or reject Jesus as the living stone. Well, you can tell a lot by how people are living their lives. If you really accept the fact that Jesus is a living stone, and you're trying to be like Jesus and be that living stone he wants us to be, then we're going to be doing the stuff Jesus does. But if we're, if we're not really accepting Jesus as a living stone, rejecting him, then that's going to show what we do the way we live. Peter divides mankind into two groups, two classes. To the believers, he says, Christ is precious. He's that precious stone. Mm -hmm. It's reminded me of the parable Jesus told in Matthew 13 of the guy who found this pearl of great price and he was willing to sell everything that he had in order to get this one special pearl. Well, Jesus is that pearl. And what are we willing to give up in order to get him? Some people aren't willing to give up anything. If they have to give up something, they don't want him. Other people are sold out completely to get that pearl of great price. So, how about you? What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sell? What are you willing to give so you can have that living, precious choice? People who don't believe in Jesus, people who don't think he's a precious living stone, they're going to be disappointed, verse 6 says. But to us who believe, he's very valuable. So valuable, we're willing to give up anything to make sure we have it. For those who refuse to obey the word of God, Peter is saying, they're the ones who reject this cornerstone. They're the ones who are rejecting Jesus. To the disobedient, Christ is like that stone that the Jews rejected. To them, Christ was imperfect and fit only to be thrown upon the rubbish heap. Not accepting the Bible as the Word of God as your final authority, that's rejecting the one that the Bible is telling us about. Not obeying is the same as rejecting. The result of rejecting Christ, verse 8 says, is doom. We're going to have to answer for that. But if we know Jesus, if we accept him as that living stone that Peter's telling us he is, if we try our best to be that living stone he wants us to be, we don't have to worry about the doom part. Because we've been built up into that spiritual house. Yes. You know, all our lives, God's working on us. None of us are perfect. God's taking his hammer, he's taking his chisel, 
He's working on us. He's, he's chipping away the stuff that's not good in our lives. He's chipping away on the things that we need to do better at. He's making us into that living stone that He wants us to be. That living stone that will be the fit temple for eternity. Oh, yeah. You know, our, our Christian life, it's a work in progress. None of us are there yet. None of us are the, are the person that God designed us to be. But you know what? One day we're going to walk those streets of gold and we're going to be that person that God planned for us to be all along. Sinless and with Him. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is changing us from a useless rock to a useful living stone. Before Michelangelo created the masterpiece we called David, there was another guy, Agostino Antonio, who had worked on it diligently for quite some time but had not been successful. And so what did he do? He, he put that piece of marble he'd been working on for quite some time on the rubbish heap. And it stayed on the rubbish heap for 40 years. And then one day Michelangelo was walking past and he saw that piece of marble there in the rubbish heap. And he decided that looks like something I can make something from. And so he took it and he made this sculpture known as David. Seemingly worthless stone was carved into one of the world's masterpieces. Because Michelangelo knew what he was doing. You know what? <coughs> I trust my Lord. I trust my God that He knows what He's doing in me. And he's chipping away the stuff that I ought to get rid of. He's making me what he wants me to be. He's making me what he created me to be. I just need to let him have the hammer and the chisel and let him go to work. But you know what? What I find myself off the time doing is taking that hammer and that chisel myself and trying to do it myself. That's God's job. Carve me into what He wants me to be. Just like the potter the Old Testament talks about. He's the potter and I'm the clay. He's the one that's going to make me what He wants me to be. I'm thankful that I have, have a church family. I'm thankful that I have my earthly family. I'm, I'm thankful that I have people who care about me and help me along to be what God wants me to be. And that's really what the church is for. Helping one another become what God wants you to be. <coughs> when Jesus looks at us, He sees a rough piece of rock. But yet, He sees the rock He created. And the potential that it has. And He wants to sculpt us and transform us into becoming that person that He meant for us to always be. That living stone. F. B. Meyer says in his commentary on, on 1 Peter, he says this, Stones touch the stone and become jewels. And the, the stone that He meant was Jesus. When you and I touch Jesus, we become jewels. Stones useful in building God's house. A man named David lived in the early 1800s. And he studied to be a preacher. When he gave his first sermon, he stood only to say that he'd forgotten everything that he prepared to say. Following the advice of a friend, he decided to become a doctor instead. He went back to school. He became a doctor. But he was determined. And he was still going to serve Christ somehow. And so he became a medical missionary in Africa. 
He cured the sick, he taught sanitation techniques, he established schools, he explored and mapped out many areas that had never been mapped out before. He preached at every opportunity that he had, began many churches, he survived many illnesses, he lost his wife to jungle fever, but still he refused to leave Africa when the people that were supporting him wanted him to come home. This is what he said. I still have so much work to do. In Africa, he died in an old age. The natives who had grown to love him began the longest funeral procession, probably in history at that time anyway, over 600 miles to the west coast where he would catch a ship back to his homeland of England. But before the journey began, the natives cut out his heart and buried it in the African soil because they said that's where it belongs. <coughs> this national cartoonist at the time, Mr. Punch, did not draw a cartoon the day of the funeral for this David. Instead, he wrote these words as a tribute to the man. That marble crumbled. This is living snow. The man's name was David Livingston. You've probably heard of him. A great missionary to Africa. Are we that kind of person? God is making into living stone. You know, in ancient times, the hallways of castles had what they called stumbling stones in the hallways. The reason they did that was if an invading army happened to come into the castle, gave the king and his family a chance to escape. Because the invading army was wearing their heavy suits of armor, and of course they didn't have electricity, so the hallways were, were kind of dark. The king, of course, and his family knew where all those stumbling stones were. It was, you know, kind of like a, a, a brick street, but every once in a while there'd be some bricks that were higher than the rest. <laughs> that was a stumbling stone, and they put them in there for a purpose. Because when those knights wearing their heavy armor was chasing the king, they trip on one of those stumbling stones. So they were called stumbling stones because it was meant to make people stumble so the king could get away. Well, Peter's telling us here in the last part of this passage that there are stumbling blocks. The devil is an architect of stumbling blocks, in fact. And he puts stumbling blocks in people's way all the time. Because he wants them to fall. And so really we've got a choice. Are we going to be that living precious stone? Or are we going to become stumbling blocks for other people? So it's a choice. Living stone. Stumbling block. Living stone. Stumbling block. I'm raising my hand to be a living stone. Which hand are you raising? You want to be a living stone? If you don't, you're a stumbling block. It's that simple. We're going to sing an invitation to him today. I want you to think about that. What kind of a living stone are you? Are you the kind of a living stone that's patting yourself after the living stone? Jesus Christ? Or are you more of a stumbling block because you rejected Christ and you're letting the devil just run your life for you. You've got to decide. Living stone or stumbling block. You're going to be one of the other. Make a decision today if you need to as we stand and as we